pack leader, top dog, dominant male, head honcho, alpha male. It's a common misconception that wolves fight for dominance within their packs to see who becomes and stays the alpha wolf. But that doesn't mean packs don't have a leader, it's just a lot simpler and less violent than you might think. Plus, it helps to get a secret boost from a microscopic friend to get the gumption you need to become top dog here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's, our th- it's your 30 minutes of interesting animal info. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. But it is also our our 30 minutes of interesting animal info. I just... It, it belongs to all of us. It's a collective effort, right? <laughs> we are Groot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to, to Cassie for the creation of our theme song to hear more of Cassie's music. Please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit visit us at our home on the web or find us on YouTube. We have some artwork there as well. Uh, and a very special thank you to our patrons, to Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard, Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about the most popular villain of nursery rhymes, but more on that later. Man, the most dangerous. That's the most dangerous game. Uh, the plague. Wait, wait. London Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> London Bridge is the real. Yeah, London villain. Bridge is the villain. Gravity <laughs> is just the victim. <laughs> Gravity is the villain uh, in London Bridge and um, Rockabye Baby. So we have a we have a, a, a big baddie on, on our hands. That's true. Uh, But we're talking about a wolf. More specifically, uh, one made of wood. A timber wolf. Well, in general, it's... uh, It's actually... The the binomial nomenclature just refers to... All wolves fall under this. Every other wolf is a, is a, uh, a subspecies. Yes. But... But, yeah, we're... So we're talking about a... This is a taxonomic nightmare, I'll tell you that. This is a debate. Yes. But we can just, if you want, we can end at the species. We don't have to go to subspecies, because that gets out of hand real fast. Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just, we might as well mention it. We're talking specifically, I guess, the eastern timber wolf. There's a western one. Which is, which might be the same thing, <laughs> but you, you you take it away. Um, well, it's the wolf. You 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 know it. You love it or hate it. I don't know. Uh, it eats grandmas. Um, but we're gonna call it here. You can call me Alpha. You can call me Alpha. <laughs> um, and. Uh, this one I'm quite proud of. Oedipal arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And that's all. That's all I got. That was that was the extent of my creative power. <laughs> you expanded yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I had to take a nap after recharge. That. Um, the yeah, which I'll explain later. Would you like to know what it's? What it is called in science? It's in the kingdom animalia. You know it. You love it. You are in it. It's in the phylum chordata. It's in the class mammalia. Uh, all, all, all of those you're mm-hmm. in. But then it's in the order carnivora. And no matter how much meat you eat, you're not going to be in that order. It's in the family Canidae. It's in the genus Canis. And it's the species Canis... Well, it's Canis lupus, right? Yeah, that's wolf. All wolves. The binomial name on uh, Wikipedia is Canis lycaon, which is... No, that's the subspecies, right? Canis lupus lycaon? 
yeah, the species is lupus. The um, subs there's a lot of little subspecies there. So just to give you like a little bit of the of taste of the taxonomic firestorm that this wolf is, the eastern wolf. It could, some people say it's Canis lycon. That's its species. Some people say, no, no, no. It's a subspecies, Canis lupus lycon. But some, some people say, no, no, no. It's Canis rufus lycon. It's a subspecies of a different thing. It's a sub, sub, red wolf subspecies. And it's there are just, 38 subspecies of Canis lupus. Yeah. But it's just so similar across the board that it's hard to say, now this is its own thing. Subspecies, when we say, <laughs> what does science call it? This is a soft science. Taxonomy, <laughs> in many ways, is a soft science. Well, if you remember, Canis lupus, this is not the first time Canis lupus has been the nomenclature for an animal we've covered. Because that's the nomenclature for a dog. That's right, yeah. So it is a, despite species being pretty much the most specific um, we get, it it encompasses dogs and dingoes and wolves. So not all Canis species. It doesn't include like coyotes and jackals and stuff like that, but it is not as specific as you might uh want as a taxonomist so or taxonomer i'm i'm where we are discussing the north american gray wolf this but specifically of, one that lives in the east <laughs> yes the the one that lives on the eastern side um so canis lupus that brings us to my favorite part of the show nitty gritty nomenclature we're doing it again. We, are, I, I, I'm. Ooh. I don't think you have to be pressed too hard to find out what a group of wolves is called. So, um, we are going to a good boy. A what? A okay. good boy. If there, there is a good boy of wolves that's about to eat me. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> a, a pack, a pack of seagulls. Yes, a pack of pack of wolves. Um. There's every, every pack of wolves um, ha, is guaranteed to have at least one rare rare wolf in it, <laughs> um, and two mana. Um, so, uh, what does Canis Lupus mean in English, Joe? Is, is it um, a wise wolf, b biting wolf, c soft wolf, or d warrior wolf? Canis. Yeah, so I I'm I wasn't really gonna be able to pull the wool over your eyes with lupus. <laughs> but maybe you don't know what canis means. I don't think I do. You said fighting, biting, why why say fighting biting soft wise. and warrior. Soft. That's a it's a real odd man out. I'm going to go with, my heart is telling me to go with soft, final answer. That is incorrect. The answer is wise. Ooh, wise or aged. That was my second. That's what Canis means. But a wise, wise biting soft warrior sounds like a bear. True. It's a, on that, That's on the bear's driver's license. I guess they do look wise if you look at pictures of them. But they also look soft. Maybe it's the gray that gives them like the idea of it's it is a aged wisdom is the idea behind Canis. So it's like, oh look at look at those old animals. They must must have a lot of wisdom. Because of how gray they are. Wolves are striking creatures. It makes sense why there's an entire graphic t shirt around uh, wanting to be them and 
in other things. Well, I was going to say a, a whole graphic t-shirt genre. I was thinking of furries. Yeah, I try not to think of furries. <laughs> but when you hear hear the term timber wolf, generally you're talking North North American wolves. But there's Western ones and Eastern ones. And, and Western ones tend to be bigger. So, so that's what we're talking about. And we're talking timber. But here's what they look like. The fur color of the eastern wolf is usually a mix of grayish brown and cinnamon. And the eastern variety are generally more uniform. But the western have has more variation. There's more, uh, more reddish hues and more like just straight gray, white. Um, but in the East, everyone's just kind of grayish brown with a hint of cinnamon. Uh, the chest and flank flanks display um, rufous or cream colors, while the neck and shoulder and tail area are black and gray. It's uncommon for Eastern wolves to have individuals with black fur. So the, the melanistic... Wolves are, are, are less common in eastern timber wolves as, than they, when compared to <clears throat> western and gray wolves. Uh, so let's talk about their size. It's quite notable. Because the first thing you notice when you meet a wolf in real life is that this is a big canine. Yeah. I've never met a wolf in real life. Uh, welcome to the Blood Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms. Through a quiz, it's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of saying singing, singing or howling the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro. But that means we get to hear from a big bad wolf. I'm sure you have lots to choose from. Yeah. I can't just pull this one out like the, the spider one would you like to guess while I pull it up well if you had recently seen the uh, the new Puss in Boots I would assume it would be death hey guess what it's you're 100% death. correct am I really yes you are oh my <laughs> goodness <laughs> All right, yeah. Is it just going to be his whistle? Well, let's see. Let's see. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. There you go. Well, well. If it isn't Pussy Boots himself. (laughs) In the flesh. That's a little big bad wolf. That's a uh, he's a pretty good bad guy for an animated movie. He what that movie was pretty good. It was very funny. I didn't realize you had seen it. I, I remember just telling you that John Mulaney's character was was just an absolute delight. So he I, was I an absolute. Same. He was a evil f- villain, not an under misunderstood villain. And they even kind of like make fun of the whole misunderstood villain thing, when he's like. Oh, I didn't have much growing up. Just the thriving business. Just a, just a wonderful parents, a supportive yeah. childhood, millions of dollars. <laughs> no, I'd say he's uh, the embodiment of privilege. Mm-hmm. Privileged evil, I guess. Um, but he has some some lines that caught me off guard. Let's talk length. A female Western Timberwolf can get as long as... 4.5 to 6 feet. And the average male is 5 to 6 feet. The, the, the cap is set 6 feet long. Uh, but the small end is long, longer. But eastern males can grow to 5.5 feet. So we're going to go with the eastern, 5.5. How many timber wolves go? Well, first of all, we're talking wolves and we're talking World War II. Can you guess what I'm about to talk about? 
what this question is going to be about. Wolves and World War II. Um, Not necessarily actual wolves, but the terminology. Are you going to talk about the U-boats? Sure am. Uh, correct again. Let's see if you're correct. Your, your spot on this will carry over to measure up. So how many timber wolves go into the length of a, the, a type? What is V? If, is that four V one, one V I uh, V one, one would be seven, seven. Duh. Uh, Oh, it's, it's iced V that's four. Right? Yes. We're talking uh, type 7 U-boat. It wasn't until just now that I realized that was a Roman numeral. <laughs> I thought it was the type V. I thought it was V-I-I. I thought, Wait a minute. Actually, I was going to say V-2. I thought it was going to be V-2. Because uh, yeah, I was thinking World War II. Yeah, like, oh. and also like the V-2 rocket and all that stuff. Uh, here's a hint. The Type 7 was the most common German U-boat U-boat in World War II. They formed wolf packs in the Battle of the Atlantic, which were made up of coordinated attacking submarines. The concept of a submarine wolf pack was first proposed in World War One, but uh, lone wolf submarine attacks were more successful. <clears throat> I'm not sure why. I assume it's harder to, like... Communicate via radio signal underwater, but maybe that's not true at all. They just tried maybe. it a few times and it didn't work. Well, in World War One, they didn't have radio, so they didn't. I thought no. I read that they had like some. Oh no, no, I'm thinking radar. Sorry, radio, yeah, yeah, yeah. radio, radar. Uh, but radar is the the is the huge factor when it comes to submarines. But so it's so hard to radio. know where everyone is. They uh, they didn't have the Enigma machine in World War One, and that was a, that was how they uh, the the submarines communicated was uh, using the code from the Enigma. Well, that's just encryption. Yeah, but so they could it still meant talk. that they could communicate without without the enemy knowing exactly what they're about to do. Right. If they didn't keep saying Heil Hitler after every message, <laughs> we would have never figured it out, honestly. They said every single one of their messages ends with this phrase, and uh, we're going to go ahead and guess it's Heil Hitler. So now we know half all these letters. And we're talking the length overall. Apparently, sometimes they measure like the, the uh, pressurized length, but we're talking about the whole thing. Pressure. Oh, they like the interior? Yeah, I guess. 200 feet. So my answer is 36. Final answer? Yes. The correct answer is 40. That is a, that is a nursing school victory. The, the, the type 7 is a is um, 67 meters or 220 feet. Yeah. In length overall. I just didn't, you know, I knew exactly how much it was. I just didn't account for the, you know, the the propeller on the back. Or, right, that's it. Yeah, that, that added an extra 20 feet that I was, I was just not accounting for. I thought the question was uh, more to, to the standard, uh, n you know, nor North Atlantic uh, measurements. Yeah, when they're at, comp when they're at r like really hot, low depths, it gets compressed to a, a, a nice 200 even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they 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 went really uh they were really advanced in their material sciences back then. <laughs> uh, <coughs> let's talk weight. The average weight of a female t western timber wolf is 50 to 85 pounds, while larger males weigh between 70 to 110 pounds. Eastern uh timber wolves range from 50 to 80 pounds, a 110 pound canine. That's quite a, quite a chunk of fur. Yeah. Of angry fur. Mm -hmm. So many piglets of weaning age 
would a wolf have to eat to eat its weight in piglets? This is a pleasant thought. <laughs> I know. Here's a hint. Pigs grow quickly. Uh, the wean, or they wean around four to six weeks old. <laughs> I wrote I'm imagining pie again. Uh, piglets the- are s- small and adorable, but they can grow eight times their size in the first six months. There's no such thing as a teacup or micro pig. So many pig loving pets. Pet owners are surprised when their mini pig grows into a full size boar. I'm just, I have the opening scene in Babe in my head that goes through the, the pig farm. So yeah, so if a wolf got in there and he wanted to eat its weight in piglets. I'm going to say they're two pounds. We're talking a month old piglet. Oh, a month? Hmm. Weaning age. Getting on solid food. I think you would have been right. That's a newborn. Two pounds. We'll say ten pounds. What was the wolf? Eighty. All right. Eight. Didn't even have to put that into my calculator. I'm that smart. At <laughs> Final answer? Final answer, eight. The correct answer is 5.3. Uh, that does not sound like a nursing school victory. A month-old piglet is nope. about 15 pounds. A monthling. <laughs> Guess that's why they call them pigs, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure it depends on breed. You might have been right if we were talking about a specific breed. But that's another thing. We're like, <clears throat> are domestic pigs and boars in the wild are the same species? And people don't think that. Are they? Yeah. If you oh. let a domestic pig and its pink, shiny people skin into the wild, <laughs> it will grow fur. So that it doesn't get sunburned anymore. Actually, I'm pretty sure even domestic pigs have fur normally. Are they shaved to be all pink and shiny? I don't know. Well, like if you look close at a pig, they de- they have like like this white fur. White, yeah, they, they that, have hair the pinkish... on them, but they're not like boar. They don't have boar bristles. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. I forget why. Man, piglets are adorable. They are. That's why Babe is a good movie. Just gotta scratch that little belly. All good with the uh, measure up? Am I free to go? <laughs> You're free Officer? to go. <laughs> uh, do you want to hear some fast facts before... Am I under arrest? Do you want to hear some fast facts about the Timberwolf? Before sure. I just get it lost in the eyes of... The, the the most adorable piglets? Sure. Timberwolves are native to North America. Eastern wolves are found in the Great Lakes region, stretching northeast all the way to Newfoundland. They are famous pack hunters capable of taking down much larger prey species, including caribou, moose, and bison. They hunt by chasing down prey until it's tired and then jumping in and wounding critical areas until the exhausted animal lets its guard down and expires. If that sounds familiar to you and you're an anthropologist, you might think it's thought that human hunters are use very similar um, hunting styles, which contributed to our developing relationship with canines of the past. Uh, they will also supplement their carnivorous... Carn- Carnivorous-rated, uh, carnivorous diets with berries. Another carnivore that eats berries. That's they're abundant in North America. It stinks to be a berry. Everyone eats that. Yeah, unless you're a poisonous berry, or That's unless true. you look like a poisonous berry. That's true. I, I guess it doesn't stink to be a berry because if you if you're a berry, you, don't you want to get eaten? And That's then... the whole point of being fruit in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Different packs can be hostile to one another, so they are careful to avoid rival territory. Lone wolves may enter other territories with the hopes of joining the pack. Uh, wolves have long been feared by humans, making their way into folklore as the ultimate bad guy. Uh, this is worsened by the fact that they that desperate wolves often eat livestock. So if food levels are down, your sheep are good at getting eaten. Or pigs, or other nursery rhyme victims. Uh, North American populations were diminished. Uh, <laughs> North American wolf populations were diminished by human hunting and retaliation. While their clashes, uh, while the clashes between humans and wolf populations can happen. Uh, where where they overlap. Wolves are generally afraid of humans. Uh, so much so that a bold or aggressive wolf today is notable and uh, out of the ordinary. Um, but wolves are keystone species, which means that they have a disproportionate effect on the ecology of a given area. Uh, keystone animals are often predators, but they don't have to be. But... Uh, in this case, it's because they hunt a variety of prey. Wolves are important uh, in controlling deer and other prey populations. So removing wolves from an area can increase deer populations, which has an impact on seasonal food resources, which can affect every level of the food chain. So wolves are very, very important. Wolves are so important that human hunters have to be responsible for controlling deer populations where wolves have been removed today the eastern wolf is considered threatened uh, but we have a better idea of their importance and their actual threat to humanity so as long as you get a good fence around your farm animals we're generally good from the big bad wolf yeah I can't I can't I mean wolves it are scary. If imagine like a pack of wolves hunting you. Yeah, they're very fast. There's lots of them. They howl as they chase you. It's always nighttime. Read uh, the beginning of White Fang, and it's like one of the most ter- terrifying de- depictions of being hunted by wolves. Yeah, in in uh, in movies and video games. Uh, wolves are the most tenacious hunters. <laughs> uh, yeah. un- unlike, <laughs> for some reason, unlike ever almost every other predator, they will do whatever it takes, no matter how much damage they take or how many of them fall, to kill their prey. Where most other predators try to get as much prey with as little energy or risk as possible. The, the mov- movie wolves are like... This is a point of pride for us. <laughs> <laughs> or like video game, like I, we we fight to the last wolf. Yeah. If there's one wolf left, it will still pose a problem. Wolves hunt in packs arisen. Um, I also remember, as a little wolf anecdote, um, that the one time that I knew an answer in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, it was the million-dollar question. And it was... What is the instrument of the wolf in Peter and the Wolf? And and I actually knew it. I considered it myself a millionaire from that point forward. <laughs> what is it? Is it the violin? It's the French horn. Oh. Because I I in my I th- this was like a, this was I was probably like 8 or 9 or something like that because that's back when who wants to be a millionaire was airing. But um in my school we were in my music class we were going over peter and the wolf so i happened to know that and now i don't remember what the instruments were for any of the other characters but because of the who wants to be a millionaire debacle um i will forever remember that the the wolf was french horn anyway you ready for a major fact sure we're calling this one another day with parasites by Phil Collins. Um, so we often think of wolves as having an alpha male, right? Like alpha wolf, that's 
that's the that's just synonymous it co- comes with the territory when you're talking about wolves you think of maybe 10 to 20 wolves in a pack that all answer to the strongest male that can be challenged at any point to take over the pack so that only the strongest and uh and most and wisest wolf is the is the leader um and just you're just waiting for that that challenger to come and and take the throne uh kind of similar to to like jungle book Aquila and all that stuff Mm -hmm. and the that's not exactly the case uh even though those those were wolves in india these are we're talking about north american wolves but that's not exactly the case in the wild packs of wolves are actually families that's it it's there's a breeding pair a mommy and a daddy and they're the leaders because they're the oldest they're the breeding pair everyone else is their children so uh alpha male is just the father or breeding male and the breeding female and the little ones all follow his lead and if he's not there, then the little ones all follow the breeding females' lead. So the, there's <laughs> there's two things at this. On one side, you have um, this whole idea of alpha males in humans, and the you know hyper masculinity that goes with that concept. Um, and then you have this backlash, which is which is all of these uh, all these people that want to. Um, rub uh the these th- these frat boys faces in the fact that there is no alpha male in in wolf packs so you know your toxic masculinity is you you could you can put that in your pocket and set it on fire um well the, the, no one's neither side is really right there's not a, like a an alpha male over this large group of unrelated um uh wolves but there is an alpha male just as much as you know the father of a household is the leader um because he's the protector and the 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 breadwinner or something like that so um the idea that like a subordinate male would challenge the the dominant male is is like a teenager taking a swing at his dad (laughs) Like it, it, it happens a lot less in wolves than it does in people, um, and it's not like if the son wins, then he becomes the alpha because his mom is still the dominant female. Um, hence, edible arrangements. <laughs> um, but inbreeding almost never happens in wolves in normal habitats. So that's this is not a fighting for the position of pack leader is not something that wolves do. Um, what actually happens is adolescent males will eventually just leave their pack and find a female to start a new one and, you know, ostensibly become the alpha of that pack because, you know, they're the breeding male. Um, if the teenager is slow to leave the nest, though, the parents will force them to eat last. So the parents eat first, the pups eat next, and then these, uh these lazy teenagers these um are the are the last ones to eat and that can sometimes cause them to fight but it's not like it's fighting for for dominance Mm -hmm. um but that being said we think of wolves as having alpha males because there were studies done in the 70s before science was invented and those (laughs) were done on captive wolves so you get you get a bunch of unrelated male wolves into one place then they will fight and one of them will become the leader so in that situation yes there's an alpha male but it's kind of more like a bunch of prisoners being thrown together and one of them being fighting his way to the the top basically of the pecking order um so that checks out and there are quote-unquote alpha males uh, uh, in that, but that's not how the wild works. A bunch of unrelated males don't get together as a pack. Packs are made up of families. Um, so the de facto position of leader goes to the patriarch without challenge. Um, and the same can be said of household dogs. So if you put a bunch of unneutered males in a group, then they will have to fight for one of them to become the de pack leader. <laughs> um, 
so uh so all you really need to do to become an alpha in the wild is to leave and cleave go start a family (laughs) but not all adolescents fly the coop as early as others some are a failure to launch um a recent study done by the University of Montana using over 200 wolves over the course of 27 years showed that there is a factor that could make some adolescents more likely to leave than others. Parasites. Spe- specifically, Toxoplasma gondii, which is that, yeah, Toxoplasmosis, that whole, that the condition you can get from being exposed to kitty litter. Um, and it's especially dangerous for uh, pregnant women. It has a real impact on the animal food chain as well. Uh, these are microscopic protozoans that uh, are an infectious parasite, and they can infect all warm-blooded animals, but they can only reproduce inside cats or felines. So their whole goal, their whole shtick in life and uh, is to make their way into the gut of a cat. (laughs) So to do that, since they're tiny and they can't just jump into a cat's mouth, they need to get eaten by things that will get eaten by cats or are likely to get eaten by cats. Um, And so, you know, they they might infect um, a mouse or a a vole or, or, you know, uh, stoat or something, sm- some small mammal, um, and cross their little protozoan fingers. <laughs> that oh, I hope a cat comes by, or you know, a bobcat or a, or uh, what have you, or cougar comes and eats this thing. Um, but they don't just cross their fingers; they cross some 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 chemistry as well they do they change the hormones and internal chemistry of the host slightly to make them bolder aggra- more aggressive and more reckless so what this does is makes mice and smaller mammals that usually hide and run away at the first sign of danger it makes them less likely to do that which makes them more likely to be eaten <laughs> So it really increases their chances of just being gobbled up. Um, And once the cat gets it, once it makes its way to a cat's gut, uh, anything that then eats the cat or the cat's droppings will get, will be infected as well, Uh, including the cat's ancient arch nemesis, the doge. (laughs) So wolves that eat house cats, bobcats, or even cougars, um, or their droppings can get infected, but the infection changes the wolf, uh, making it bolder and less timid. The same traits that would cause a prey animal to be eaten more more likely to be eaten are the traits that make predators more successful. So the University of Montana study found that the wolves that in their study that were infected were eleven times more likely to leave their birth packs earlier and start new packs thereby becoming alpha males. So yes, there yes, wolves have alpha males. No, it does not really happen in the wild. Uh I, I mean, they, yes, they have alpha males in in so much as it's just the dad. <laughs> um but large groups of unrelated males hunting parties uh do not coalesce uh at least not frequently or not in not naturally and there's like elect a, an alpha leader by trial by combat uh, that doesn't happen um and you're more likely to branch off from your parents and sow your wild oats if you're infected with toxoplasma is that just, you just ate a bad cat is that- is that what's in alpha brain? It's just uh <laughs> it's just the boldness and lack of timidity of toxoplasmosis. Well, alpha brain is like a Joe Rogan supplement. It's just cat feces. Is it really? I didn't know that. I didn't know he had a supplement called Alpha Brain? Yes. Oh, that's that's rough. Well, I don't know if it's his <laughs> or if he just like talks about it or if he just takes it. 
<laughs> Man, you can pay me to take something called Alpha Brain. Um, <laughs> it's just cat litter, <laughs> full of uh, in 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 some sort of infectious protozoan that's gonna make you bolder and more successful with the ladies. But it's like <laughs> super dangerous to like unborn, right? Yeah, like when I said, pregnant, it's very it's very dangerous for pregnant women. Oh. You you don't want a very bold baby. You don't I want an aggressive that. baby in the world. No, yeah, you want your baby to be as as timid as possible. A passive, just chilling. Mm -hmm. With a placental hammock. With a villain, the big bad wolf. But yeah, that's all I got. Hope everybody learned something about wolves. You got anything else? Yeah, no, that's all I got too. All right, so for you out there in Podcastia, forget about this alpha dog stuff. Branch out and start your own pack. And, I don't know, maybe some infected cat droppings wouldn't hurt. Like it doesn't hurt the wolf here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> infected cat droppings definitely cat hurt droppings. when you're trying to start your own pack <laughs>